Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are going to work on another folio. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. It's going to end up being the same size. It'll be finished uh, six by eight. Now we're going to start out with our first panel. It's eight inches tall by 11 inches and you're going to score it three, nine, and nine and a half. Three, nine, nine and a half. Our second panel is going to be eight by eight and you're going to score at six and six and a half. And then our third panel is going to be, I covered it up, seven and a half, seven and a half by eight. And then you're gonna score at six, six and six and three eighths. And then they're going to get attached just like so. Just like the other one, uh, the first one we did, except you're not gonna have this vertical. I shortened this piece to not have the vertical. And you'll see why in a minute why I made that change. Okay, now just as before, we're gonna fold this over, we're gonna apply that score line to this score line. off a little. <clears throat> Let's try that again. It didn't come down quite far enough. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yes, it does. Okay, there we go. So there's our first two joined. There's our flap sticking up. And then the second one, instead of having that vertical flap, it's just cut, and we're just going to add this to the back. So instead of this being a score line, we're putting the finished edge right against the score line. This is the seven and a half by eight. And again, I always flip things around because I just, for some reason, it just feels better as a left-hander to, to look at it and to press down from in this direction. Otherwise, my left hand would be across the project. Not yet. It's very, very humid. So everything is very tacky. I should have put some glue on here to give myself some wiggle time. There we go. I know it sounded awful, but look, it came off clean. <laughs> There we go. If you don't have a palette knife, get a palette knife. <laughs> or take your time, add a little glue, and put things down straight. Okay, so this is going to go this way, like this, like this, like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down because I want this one to open this way, which is the opposite of the, the, one, the one we did a few days ago. This is going to, I'm gonna leave this flap be, it's probably gonna be a pocket, but what we're gonna do here in the center is we're going to put a waterfall. And I've already cut it. If I can just remember where I put it. And they're all clipped together and everything. That's what I get for organizing. I set things aside and I can't find them. Trust me, there's going to be a waterfall. We can't put it down yet anyway because we have to put a background um, in first. And then we're going to have a waterfall. These waterfalls are going to be five 
uh, in a finished state five by seven, and then they're going to get uh, incrementally smaller as we go forward. So this flap will go this way. Now the reason that I altered the measurements is because I didn't want that other flap coming over the center. And if I tried to make it go this way, it would have to hop over a gusset and that doesn't work either. So there you go. And I just remembered where I put them. Here they are. So I've already got them all cut and scored so I can tell you what the measurements are. The first one is seven and a half. Actually, I'll start over five by seven and a half, five by seven and a half. The next one is five by seven, five by six, yep. five by seven and a half, five by seven, five by six and a half, five by six, five by five and a half. So you're going to just go in, in uh, half, half inch increments. That's going to be running across the, the bottom of your screen if I set it too fast. And then when we're done, basically what you'll see is each one of these on the inside gets a half inch shorter, but at the end, these all stack nice and neatly together. Okay. So that's what we're going to have in the center. And that's why we have these, um, <clears throat> That's why we have this 3 8 inch gusset here, okay? And then it's going to fold over just like that and close on this side. Okie dokie. So let me uh, go ahead and get the tape on these, and then I'm going to organize my papers when I get back. We'll start decorating. Hey, everyone. I'm back, and I've made some progress on the book, and I want to make a couple small changes um, to the base of the book before... Uh, we start decorating. So one of the things I want to do is is add um, a pocket over here on um, the right hand side. So this pocket is three inches tall. Let me verify that. Yeah, three inches tall, and it's the width of um, of this panel. So it's just under six inches, and that's because of the score line here. So I'm going to add this pocket here, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a pocket. Okay, so I just want you guys to know those two things. Before I do that, I'm going to add um, the base paper. Ooh, not that one. So that when I glue this closed as a pocket, um, I don't have to worry about slipping it under um, the pocket itself. So let's go ahead and start with this. So let me look and tell you with my little cheat sheets here. This is from the paper pad. So the piece that I'm using right here is from the paper pad and it's one of my favorites. So the other thing I like about doing two projects out of this one, is nice, um, you've got two projects that you can give, um, but also they, they're gonna look so different. I've even flipped it around so they open differently, but um, because you don't have duplicate patterns, um, the patterns that I chose to decorate with are going to look very different from the first one. Okay, and then I promise you guys my next project is going to be a large scale um, uh, album project. When I say large scale, I mean it's going to be a mini album, but it's, it's not going to be a folio. My glue either doesn't come out or it's gushing. I think that was just an air bubble. Okay, we're going to glue this down. I'm going to hold it for a second because this is 110 pound. It does have quite a, a memory of its own, so it wants to unfold. So I'm going to hold it in place for just a moment. Okay, and this is the continuation of that pattern. It's going to go right here. Isn't that lovely? So you could place a photo here or you can do some journaling right on top of these lines and then put a photo um, as your insert. I think the peach and yellow is really pretty. Okay, I'm feeling better, but I gotta say I definitely have the COVID fatigue. I can't seem to last more than a, about four hours at a time, and then I gotta go take a break, and then I can get up and around for about four hours and then I'm just exhausted. It's uh, it's really quite something. Okay, on this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and lay down 
the top half of this and then we're going to add our pocket. And yeah, make sure I was actually recording. I also have serious brain fog. <laughs> I can't remember what I was doing. I go to write something down and then by the time I pick up the pencil, I've forgotten what I was going to write down. So. So this was one sheet split in half because these panels are six by eight. So that works out beautifully. And we're drinking coffee because I can't stay awake, but it's making me shaky. The older I get, the more uh, the more it seems to affect me in that way. Make sure um, you're staying out of your um, hinge area. Get. Handy dandy wipe. One thing about working with white is uh, it's hard to keep it clean. Okay, I'm just going to go here. Oh, uh, I think I told you, but again, the pocket is three inches by six, three by six. Oops, it's too low. Okay, there we go. So there's the two sides. Then I picked this very simple pattern for the center because we're going to do a waterfall. So this will have lots of room for photos. Uh, what? It's too narrow. No, it's not. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to lay it on top of the, um, the gusset. I almost panicked. I'm like, I don't have enough paper to, to do that again. Okay, there we go. I forgot that's a nice wide gusset there. Isn't that lovely? Okay, now here is our waterfall. So our first waterfall is seven and a half by five, or five by seven and a half. It's gonna go here. Then we're gonna go half inch increments smaller until we get to five and a half by five, which will be a five by five square finished, and that's gonna go on the bottom. And so basically when we're done, this is actually what you're going to see. You're going to see this piece centered. And here is the lovely piece that I've chosen for this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. And then we're going to center our first flap and install the rest of the waterfall. Uh... I should look at my cheat sheet to tell you, but I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I was going to say I'm pretty sure it's from the pads, but now I'm starting to think it's not. I have to look. I'm going to look that up for you. Um, it is, uh, it's from, um, the A4 pad, the A4 pad. So these two are from the regular 12 by 12 pad. This is from the A4 creative pad. Seven, Five by seven and a half, score half inch on the seven and a half inch side. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. So this should be 
This should have um, an equal border around all four sides. That's what we're aiming for. I'm going to pull it a little closer so I can get my head directly over it. I'll, I'll push it in front of you guys when I'm finished. Okay, here we go. How's that? Pretty nice. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add the rest of the waterfall. And we're just butting this score line up to this one. This uh, 7 by 5, score half inch on 7 inch side. 7 by 5. So as we as we make these each of these smaller, it nests under the one above it, so nothing is going to stick out on the bottom. The waterfall is going to appear on the other side. Okay, so this should be six and a half, six and a half by five, score half inch on the six and a half inch side. Six by five, score half inch on the six inch side. Five and a half by five, score half inch on the five and a half inch side. Okay, so now you have this nice neat waterfall, okay? So we need a way to keep it closed. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to burnish everything in place. Okay. So I'm going to place a magnet here and here and then I'm going to just do a little bit of testing to see what else I need to do to hold everything in place. So it looks like I probably should have had a magnet here as well. So I'm going to try to squeeze one under there. I'm going to see if I can't get a magnet under here with my palette. That's the challenge with waterfalls is you definitely want to put this down first and then add your waterfall. But if I had glued only to the last inch or so, I wouldn't have to lift to add a magnet. But I was hoping that the magnet on top was going to help. So live and learn. to be care extra careful because this doesn't have a whole lot of pattern on it. So whatever we're doing could potentially show through. There we go. I've got a lot of space to work with. Yep, that's going to be fine. Okay, now the key is going to be getting it under there, right? <laughs> so I need to poke it through and it needs to be with something that is... Um, Plastic or non-magnetic. So let me find something real quick. I need some, um, what am I thinking of? I have a, a plastic spatula. Let me see if I can find it.
not handy, but I do have these bone folders and this one's, I think, sharp enough that I can push it through. Lift the paper enough to get it through. So I, I partly want to leave that magnet there so that this one is drawn to it. And then also I can keep track of where it, where it landed. It's okay if it's off to one side, I'm fine with that. Okay, pretty good. I'm happy with that. Looks like this one moved around on me. Okay. So it is going to take a couple magnets. So the other option would be to put a flap up, um, you know, like a, a swing flap to come up and have a magnet here, which I've done before, but I don't want to cover that picture up. So that's why I'm not doing it, in case you're wondering. Okay, so it looks like I'm using two, three, two, four, five magnets. So, kind of unusual, I know. So I'll go back over that in a second. So there's a set of magnets on the top. A set of magnets on the bottom and an extra magnet in the middle and actually I'm going to let's see we have three or maybe I don't need it no nope, I don't need the middle one nope that's all we need so a set on the top and a set on the bottom they do all need to be lined up so make sure that you're doing that so there's a set here on the, the last flap and underneath the base, and then a set on the top two, and that's it. I thought we needed one in the middle, but we don't. Or at least so far we don't. I'll set that aside if we need it because we're adding layers of paper. I'll let you know. Okay, so thanks for going through that with me. I wasn't really sure how much we'd need to hold it together. It does take a few more magnets because like I said, we're using 110 pound cardstock because there's no chipboard, um, so everything is very heavy. Okay, so where are we? So this is done, and this is gonna go on the outside, the outside, and then I need two strips here, and I thought I had trimmed them out, but I haven't. So these strips, um, I am going to cut from this. So they're gonna match. I was pretty sure I have one of these somewhere. Um, how about that? Let me look in my goodie tray, which is where most of my bits land. So if I have one, it would be in here. And it would be green, and I don't see it. Oh, here it is. It's across the table. Okay, so that is the one that goes on this side for the half inch strip, and this one is a little bit thinner, so I'll have to make a thinner strip. And these are gonna go on the outside. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Okay, now we need to make a quarter inch strip. Oh no, that will work. That should do it. Let's see. Yes, it is. Looks pretty good so far. Okay, go ahead and close that. I do have this planned for this flap, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it. And I'll tell you where it comes from in just a moment. Because I'm honestly not sure. Okay, and then I went ahead and cut two strips that are gonna go on the outside edges to match. I need one more half inch. I hope I have it. Because this is for, I think, the quarter inch. Mm, no, let me see. Definitely not a half inch. It's too big. Let's see if I can find more of that. And I'll also tell you where it's from. So that paper. I don't see it. How about that? That's weird. I don't see this one either. So this one has got the wood on one side. Huh. I'm not sure, but I can tell you it came from either the paper pad, patterns pad, or <laughs> creative pad. That's terrible. It's only showing me one of, it's only showing me the A side, not the B side, so I don't know. That's kind of crummy. Sorry about that, guys. This looks like something from the patterns pad because it's got um, wood on one side and a pattern on the other, but that's not very helpful because we're talking about this and I glued it down, so now I don't know what's on the other side. Words. That's not very helpful either. I think it's actually from the paper pad, which um, the inside came from. I think it's actually from these. And we're gonna find out in just a second. Nope, that's too dark. Yeah, that's too dark, so I'm not sure. Oh, enough of the mystery. I'm sorry about that, guys. So we've got that covered, we need to cover this. So that's what I was doing is I was looking for that print. And I got totally sidetracked. I 
And I have this, but I don't think I have anything longer. So we might have to do, make another choice. You can see I still have plenty of paper left. Of course I'm not done yet, but there's still plenty of paper. It's mostly A4 here. I'm gonna come back to it because I can't find anything handy. So what I can do though, is we can go ahead and decorate the back, which is going to be this image. Super cute. And I'll come back and do the, the spines after we get this in. This is going to be the cover, but we're going to add, yes. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I, what did I do while I was gone? I added this little strip, that's it. And then I cut this um, off of, a strip off of here to cover this part. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got two magnets there, and I've got two magnets here, and I told you last time that I didn't think those magnets were strong enough, <clears throat> and I think part of my problem was, let me bring in my, my other one, is I didn't have the folio folded right. I think this was getting stuck in the middle um, or something. So when you when the folio is folded correctly, it sh you shouldn't have any trouble. Your magnets should be strong enough. Um, but having said all that, I am going to add an additional magnet, and it's going to go right here. It's going to get sandwiched in between these two pieces, and this is going to be part of the cover. So this came from... It's one of my favorite parts. It came from the paper pad, and there it is on the paper pad. So you've got all this um, pretty floral on the bottom, which is where this came from. So basically, um, the pattern looks something like this. So I cut it in half at six. This becomes the background, and then this is going to be the overlay here. So I'm not going to put this down yet because we've got to locate the magnet. So we're going to locate um, where we're putting this first. And, and of course we want to do that with this in, in mind. So we'll lay that down. So we've got lots going on down here and not a whole lot going on up here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go up a little higher. So I'm going to cut this little piece off because I don't want it to hang over the edge and get stuck on something. <clears throat> Okay, and that allows me to push this up a little bit higher. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so looks like about right there. I'm laying it where it's going to get installed so I can see uh, the flap, the line of the flap. And I want to make sure my words are straight, go as high as I can without going off the edge. So I think that makes for an interesting opening um, and very different from the first one we did. Okay. 
So that's done. So now we have this piece, which is going to go just like so. So I'm going to go ahead and add my magnet here. I'm just going to glue this in place. Let it dry for, for a second there. And then we're going to cover it. And the reason I, I uh, use adhesive instead of uh, tape over it is because this is 110 pound cardstock with designer paper over it. So that's going to be a lot to penetrate. So I'm going to remove one of the layers, which is which would have been the tape. Okay. And I did, um, I backed the circle once here and once here, and I did that just so it's nice and rigid. Um, because not much is holding on to the flap itself. <clears throat> did I do that wrong? Yes. No. Okay, now we're ready to lay down the companion. And I'm just going to use tape to temporarily hold it in place while the glue dries. <clears throat> And that feels nice and secure. Let that dry. I think I need a little bit more glue here. Of course, that's probably too much. Can also put a picture there, which would be nice. Okay. Let's test this one more time. Perfect. Oops, I didn't let it dry long enough. <clears throat> okay, now I'm ready to put this down. And this tape was temporary too. Like I said before, I just want to remove as many layers between um, the magnet and The cardstock as I can because it's so thick. It's like I tore a little bit. I hate that.
There we go. Okay, this is our last piece, and I keep going back and forth on this or this, and I think I'm going to do this because I think it's easy, going to be easier to put a picture on it. Oops, I got a bunch of glue there. Hmm. some of this mess out of the way so you guys can look at it without all these other scraps around it. Okay, so what's left? It looks like I need to put um, something there and that's it. So the last piece is these two spine pieces. So let's take a look and see what we've got. <clears throat> Let's see. No, I won't have any more of this. I was thinking I would, but I used that six inches and so is the cover. So that's the end of that. There won't be any strips left, but I do have this and I like it a lot and it, it pretty much matches. So this one needs to be a quarter inch and the other one needs to be three eighths. I think we're ready. Yep. I think it's the right length. We're going to find out. Yeah, I think it blends in neatly. looks like a continuation of the other pattern. It's not, but certainly works. Okay, so what's left? So we still have our um, waterfall to complete and then we want to do some inserts here. So we're getting we're in pretty good shape here. This is really, really pretty. I like the second one better than the first and that, that's not uncommon, I don't think. Let's do a little bit with the cover here. So by definition, because this was added to the flap and because there's a couple magnets under it, it's creating... Um, some visual uh, elevation here, but um, I think I'd like to do a little bit of layering. Behind the scenes, but I'm not sure with what yet. And I've got this little bird fussy cut, which I thought would look cute on here, but I'm not liking it. <laughs> got this little pot that we could add somewhere. And then I fussy cut some of the flowers that went around it and I'm thinking of adding them 
uh, just like so, just behind it. I don't want it to hang off because I don't want it to get stuck on anything. I kind of like it across from this, so I think I'm going to cut that uh, green leaf off. And then I'm going to glue it on just like so. So it's going to go on the white rim here. Or actually, it could go just be just below it. Yep, let's get some glue on that. We'll put a little bit on both sides because I think it's going to go slightly behind the green. That's my hope. Yep, it does. Let's see how that looks. Looks good. I got to move it, nudge it forward. And then I'm going to put a little more glue on this side. <clears throat> there we go. So we got some balance going on here. This is just another fussy cut flower. It is so odd. I'm going to actually add um, chipboard to this to not ink. I keep thinking about it. Um, it sure saves a lot of time. It's nice not to have to do. together okay I can get rid of these bits and I like this guy maybe I can do oh. okay it was sideways it was slanted it looked like I didn't get my letters on straight but I think I'm okay let's see it's on the back side this is going to go with the insides because the, um, the outsides are purple and the insides are yellow and, and uh, peach and red. A little bit of everything. You could try it down here. It would have been okay. It's just a little bit too big to go here. It's covering up the words, so I don't like that. So we'll set that aside for something else. And I also fussy cut this circle, which I'm not liking. It doesn't seem like it has the right colors, but I do have a couple of other things that we can look at. It could certainly do something more natural. I don't care for that either. Let me see if I've got any other circles or cut aparts. <clears throat> kind of needs to have purple in it, I feel. Or gray. It's, it's so pretty. That needs to go somewhere on the inside. I think mine might put those on some inserts. Let's cut this down, see what it looks like. I'm not sure. This is just a rough cut to see if I like the layer. I'll clean it up if we decide to use it, and I'll probably cardstock back it.
Well, I don't care for it. Maybe. I'm going to cardstock back it and see how I like it. It just uh, needs something to help it stand out against the white. Well, maybe. Not crazy about it. <clears throat> okay, let me straighten all this up. I'm sure I've got other choices. I just need to go through my cut apart. Scale is the challenge here, I think. Okay, I do think I'm done with this. So let's focus back on the inside for now. And um, let's get the waterfall co covered. So I've got some pieces set aside, I think. I think I'm gonna have to mix and match here. <clears throat> Weird. Okay, let's see. Okay, so that's the back side. So let's go ahead and get those in, and then we will dig through and find our A sides. Isn't that cute?
cool. That's done. Let's see what else. Don't need that. <clears throat> okay. So now we have the flip sides. <clears throat> So I'm going to do something different here. I am going to put a one inch strip on the bottom of each of these. I'm not sure why. Uh, this is five inches wide. Um, do I want a one inch? Yeah, I think so. Ow! Shoot! I caught my elbow on my trimmer that hurt yeah and I'm gonna only put glue on the bottom that means this has to have tape on it so I'm gonna change this tape out instead of double-sided tape it's going to be scotch tape smarted Do the sides too. That will need to. So let me so basically this will act as a tuck spot for your photos so you can interchange them if you want to. So I'm going to put that right there just so you can it's easy to demonstrate that this is a tuck spot. It's a little awkward with the magnet, but that's fine. And then each of the subsequent ones will get a one inch strip as well. <clears throat> now I'm gonna do three of the four sides. Um, because it's five inches wide, uh, chances are none of your photos are gonna be uh, wider than four inches. So you should be able to fit them even if the two sides are glued down. And that'll just make this strip more, t more stable. Okay, I gotta uh, organize because I keep hitting my elbow <laughs> on stuff that's sticking out. Also, because these are tuck spots, you can put your, you know, ephemera tickets, um, agendas, invitations, recipes, I don't know, whatever you're trying to say, guest lists, whatever you're trying to say. <clears throat> Alrighty, I'm gonna come back to that. Now I'm gonna make two inserts. We're gonna look at what paper we have left. So these are from the 12 by 12, and then this is the 12 by 12. And I think everything else here is from the A4 from A4s, and then I got some little bits. Mm -hmm. 
think that was so the other thing I'm gonna do is I want to cut apart some of these things and put them in the tuck spots I just created so that we won't forget they're there let me see how this yellow looks inside the book next to this um, see if I like that look because if so, then I'll make a couple of inserts with these, and these are very easy to put, um, yeah, I do, very easy to put photos on. So again, this is six by eight, so let's make our insert. Five by seven. And we'll do the other one five by seven as well. <clears throat> there we go. Now I'm going to make these, I think, a little bit more interesting by um, running some gray down do a gray band and I've got a couple of yes. let's try this what do you guys think yes no maybe let's, see. Seven. let's try a half inch that seemed like a bit much too much gray. So let's see what we, let's do a half inch on this side. Do I like it? Mm. I'm not sure. Not sure I'm digging that. Okay, so I'm going to make two cards for these five by sevens. So there'll be ten By seven. Two of them, ten by seven. So, what I'd like to do is cut it. The right uh, height so this is seven inches high and then it's um, we want it to be um, five by seven so I'm going to score it five okay and then when I fold it in half that's my five by seven and I'm going to put this in the trimmer together so I'm trimming both of these edges at the same time so it'll be nice and straight and there won't be any overlap There we go. Okay, here we are. So let's go ahead. I think these need to be trimmed down. Just a smidge.
Okay, there was one. Let's get all this out of your field of vision. Sorry about that. And here's two. Now, you, these could be top down, open, or side to side, depends. Whatever you want. This doesn't really have a direction because it's got some upside down, some right side up. So you can put them in the pockets any way you want. Now let's get some little little things in our pockets here. And I mean little, and it's only because I've already cut them apart. <laughs> okay, and of course there's lots, lots more stuff to cut apart. Um, so let me show you real quick what's left. So we're pretty much done. Um, you can, there's enough paper to decorate the inside of these and I may do that, but not on, uh, not on film. So I've got all these bits, um, easy, uh, there's another one that I've cut apart that I should use, um, easy to, uh, make lots of cards. And then here are some of the sheets that are of larger size. So you've got nice backgrounds and card toppers, you've got both. So as you can see, you can easily um, do the inside of those bifolds, uh, the A and the B side, as well as still have some scraps left over for card making. So, and that's not all. There's a couple more sheets here, uh, a couple more sheets and partial sheets. So lots of fun doing this project. I think I'm going to go ahead and dress the inside of those cards since I've got the paper to do it. And then um, I may even make a card to show you guys too. It's a great collection for card making. Um, it's just very, it just speaks to, to me as far as what cards would look like. So that's what it looks like top down, bottom up, and it feels really good in your hands. Um, it's a nice weight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll be back soon. Like I said, the next project's gonna be a big project.